just a, a, a one meter interval between our profile. Um, so we got a little more detail and we, did, we weren't really trying to uh, see quite as deep because we knew there's, um, there's a little slightly different type, it's a little thicker overburden of geology um, in the area. But um, we, I, I wanted to um, use a different type of uh, three-dimensional um, uh, modeling to, do, to interpret this. Um, basically, it, it was pretty similar uh, to the data collection we did um, at uh, with the Fuji River sink, but, but it was a uh, smaller grid and close, more closely spaced. And um, we actually didn't run as, do as much uh, filtering on the um, profiles. I think I skipped over that before, but um, there are a couple of things that you do after you, with, with, with the, the profiles to make the, the signal stand out more. You, um, you correct, for example, for the fact that the, the, the radar wave is losing energy, is going down to the ground, so you boost it a little bit. This is called gain in some of the, and that way you can um, get a truer depth and a truer um, image of what, what this, what's going on under the ground as it goes deeper, because otherwise it's going to fade off and you're only going to see the ones that are near the surface. So that's called amplitude correction. Time zero just means that you're, um, you're, you're, you're throwing out the top part of each file because as, as the radar uh, wave comes back, it's, it's scattered by the air. So there's a lot of noise at the top, so you just strip that out. That's setting um, a zero point for every uh, file. So there's a little bit of uh, software, uh, computer program that you, you run on these. But we basically saw two or three big, um, or four or five meter size diameter uh, features out there. And then a whole rim of indurated sand that ran around the edge of this thing. So this is, um, and we, we had to put some cores in there to look and see what is it we're, that, uh, that, that's, that's causing some of these reflections. And we can see that there's kind of iron cemented sand that's um, not allowing the radar energy to pass, basically. It's bouncing off that. And that's what's on the rim of this. The areas that are subsiding, those are allowing the radar to go down, so they're not showing as much um, reflection. So that was one of the, the good things about this, was we have uh, access to it all the time. It's really probably to take some tours. And um, this image is done from uh, basically taking all, all of the profiles that are run and then making a series of what we call time slices. So you're, you're, you're basically going to view the ground going down into it uh, in different depths. You ch change, um, and I'll uh, show you. So um, this, this is a going slicing through the ground at about 90 centimeters below the ground, about three feet down. And like I said, the redder stuff is higher amplitude that's um, and, uh, kind of a hawthorn sand that's indurated. And uh, that it's sinking, the energy is sinking into the areas that are um, sinkholes. So you can make up a three dimensional uh, representation. You can rotate it. You can, you can actually slice it different ways with this, this program. And um, it's, for several reasons, you don't want to do a lot to the data before you put it into this program. We, try, we also did the same kind of analysis with a GIS on this data, but it, um, for several reasons, partly because we had to filter it a lot, it didn't um, give us as good results as it had when we were working on the data that uh, Jesse was doing. So, and interesting, to get the core up, um, this is actually inside the sinkhole where it's, uh, the, the energy is going in a little bit or on the side of the sinkhole, and there are like, um, shear planes in this clay, basically little uh, failure uh, areas where it's, uh, and, uh, I'm just going to try to look at it under the microscope at some point, but basically you can see there's thin, these are, these are uh, taken up pretty much 
uh, as they're angling inside that core. So they're, they're sloping down into the sinkhole and they're little thin layers uh, where the clay is sliding down into the hole. So um, it's kind of interesting to see what's actually causing it. So it's, uh, it's failing into something that's changing gradually, not uh, quite like the typical idea of what a sinkhole would be in limestone. 